So I can't tell you how disappointed I was last year when we didn't make it to the falls. To go all that way and to just battle as hard as we did and to not make it was hugely disappointing. You know, I, I mean, I felt a sense of accomplishment in how far we got given the conditions, but it was still a huge downer. So this year, we're gonna finish what we started or we're gonna break down and try it. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. This is what I said last year when we attempted to make it to Ruby Falls. Last year everything started out smoothly for our group. And the weather was absolutely amazing. It was 10 degrees above freezing, which is rare for February in Canada, in the Northern Rocky Mountains. As we approached the halfway marker, two things became abundantly clear. First, we were running out of time. And second, the snow was just too deep for most of our group to handle. It was, uh, it was, you know, we were stuck a few times and other people were stuck. It was a good day. We did our absolute best. We took a wild swing at it. Our best shot. But in the end, we came up just a bit short. And halfway would be as close as we would get to the falls that year. Each winter, this trail changes, and it presents new and unique challenges to each visiting group. Would we make it to the falls this year, or would we once again Falls short. I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> the conditions in the mountains this year have been mild to say the least. The ever popular Trans Alta Trail to Ghost Falls has actually been, well, kind of boring. The snow cover was bleak, leaving the trails covered in ice. The conditions had been the iciest I've ever seen them. But in the two months since my visit to Ghost, the weather has changed drastically. The mountains have been blanketed with fresh snow. While the early morning did absolutely suck, I wanted our group to hit the trail as close to sunup as possible. Last year we didn't actually hit the trails until 12.30pm, and the trail to Ruby is a long way, so I wanted to eliminate time from the equation as best I could. Unlike the trail to the Ghost Falls, this staging area is somewhat remote. <laughs> it's halfway to nowhere, really. We would air down here, and once again, Wranglers were the minority. There were only two of us. Our group was pretty diverse. We even had a Range Rover. Sadly, not this kind of Rover. It's more the urban crawler variety. Even with chains, I had my doubts about its ability of making it to the falls. We hit the trail just after 9.30 a.m., a full three hours sooner than the year before. Incidentally, we are doing this run exactly 364 days after my first attempt. In addition to the Land Rover, we were also joined by a trifecta of Yodas. This old school Land Cruiser equipped with a front solid axle and an FJ Cruiser. We all made short work of this first crossing. And so far, the rover, 
with its four-wheel independent suspension and pretty much the most ground clearance in our whole group, was doing just fine. The river crossings continued to be easy. If we had one concern though, it was the ice giving way. One by one, we made it over, but the snowdrifts were beginning to get just a bit deeper. This is going way too smoothly. I have a very, very bad feeling about this. We were making great time. The trail was quite different than my previous attempt. And at times we were over 100 meters off of the usual trail. So we've now made, officially made it past the spot where we had to turn back last year. The trail in the previous attempt took our rather large group through a deeply drifted creek bed. In a way, I was relieved that the new trail avoided this crossing. Feels pretty good to make it this far. I think we're doing pretty good time-wise. Um, you know, it uh, remains to be seen if we make it to the falls. You know, we've, we've got quite a ways to go yet and uh, the conditions on the, the trail after the lakes, um, we've been getting mixed reports. It sounds like it's, it's quite a bit of snowpack. So we'll see, uh, we'll see if we make it. Routes that existed last year were dead ends this year. Nevertheless, we officially made it past the spot where we threw in the proverbial shop towers last year. The terrain shifted from an icy ruby creek to exposed creek bed for long stretches. Occasionally, the trail cut off the creek bed and into the forest. This is one of my favorite parts, but it was definitely tight. I'm so happy there are no pickup trucks this year. Once we emerged from the trees, there was more rock crawling. We emerged from the Bear Creek bed and entered the mouth of a vast, wide open river basin. The wind was stiff and so were the snowdrifts. Things had been going smoothly so far, but all that was about to change. The, uh, the Range Rover is stuck. The Range Rover, even with all its ground clearance, was high centered in a deep snowdrift. Moments later, the rover stuck again. To make matters worse, the fully automated four-wheel drive system seemed to be confused by the deep snow. And the tires, well, they were just too small for this trail. This would be as far as the rover would go. Range Rover guy's gonna stay here until we're back. He 
uh, he doesn't want to hold us up anymore. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll catch up to y'all in a bit. Down by one, our group continued the trek towards the falls. We were in the final five kilometer stretch. The conditions were good as the trail had been cut by a group just ahead of us. But two rigs had disappeared from my rear view mirror. How you guys doing in the back? I think they're stuck. <laughs> they were slightly more than stuck. Somehow, they were down five lug nuts. With no spares, they borrowed one from each wheel and reinstalled the tire. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. That's why it's super important to always uh, Always check your lug nuts after each run. Um, there's another pinstripe. Um, yeah, or before the run, um, or during. <laughs> I don't know, I've never seen that happen. So I, I don't know. Even though we were just barely two kilometers away from the falls, the mechanical failure had spooked them. Two of the three Toyotas turned back and they would eventually meet up with the Range Rover. Our group of six was now a group of three. But we were determined to reach our goal, so we trudged on. This was it, the final push before achieving our goal. We were the second group to arrive at the falls on this day. Riding on tires no smaller than 37s, this group of heavily modified Jeeps definitely had it a bit easier than our group did. To get to the actual falls, you need to walk just a short distance. There are no words to describe what I felt at achieving my goal of reaching these falls. There's only emotion. Many say this is an easy trail, and that may be true in the summer, but in the winter, it can be a very challenging adventure. This was in fact Kendale's third attempt to make it to the falls. I am so happy to be here. It took me three years to get to these. <laughs> it's like, oh, I finally made it, and wow, I finally made it. <laughs> this was only my second attempt to make it here, but like Kendale, I was pretty happy to have made it. It was now time for us to start the long journey back. Well, the falls were kind of fun. It was uh, definitely worth the trip, but the uh, the exit, the snow, it's it's gotten really weird. It has kind of like no grip. You know, we spent um, probably an hour just getting out of the uh, the day use area, and on the way in, we just drove in. There was no issue. And this wasn't exactly how I expected the way home to start out. 
But like I said, the snow is a lot different now than earlier in the day. One thing to note, if you are planning on doing this trail, you can absolutely expect to get more than just a few pinstripes. Even though Ruby got stuck more than I would have liked, especially in front of all those cool jeeps in their fancy 40s, I was pretty happy that we made it all the way to the falls. While this may be an easy trail in the summer, the two times I've done this trail in the winter, it was very challenging. In fact, rigs with tires smaller than 37s struggled. Both times. As we crossed the ice, beginning the long trek back to the staging area, I finally got a chance to just sit back and enjoy this amazing place. This was a truly amazing adventure. But Western Canada is so vast and there are so many places to explore that I'm unsure when or even if I will ever do the Ruby Falls Trail again. For me, making it to the falls was a bucket list item. Now that I've done it, I'm looking forward to new challenges. For next winter, I'm thinking that a wander into British Columbia is in order. But for now, this adventure wasn't quite over just yet. We caught up to the members of our group that turned back before reaching the falls. This crossing, which is very familiar to Kendale, was causing painful memories for a brand new set of victims. I'm not even sure what happened here, but at least all four wheels are still attached. But in the end, experience, and just a bit more skinny pedal, would prevail over this pretty basic obstacle. Our day ended 13 hours after it began, and another adventure was coming to an end. I had hoped to finally get to do a nighttime crawl, so leaving at dusk was just a bit disappointing. On my way home, I was still processing all that had happened over the past day, and I have to say, this is still my favorite off-road trail ever. The way the trail changes up from twisting through the forest to rocky creek beds and river crossings, to large vistas surrounded by massive mountains seemingly poking out of the ground. This is going to be a hard trail to replace as my favorite, but I sure do look forward to trying. <laughs>